Good after Morgan and welcome back to the channel. This week we're not wasting any time and getting straight into work. So let's pick up the diff where we left it off in episode 5 and you can see how precious I'm being by laying some cardboard down so not to scratch my new hammer out. <laughs> I appear to be making this harder than it looks. The subframe is quite light, I just don't know where to put my feet. <laughs> Thankfully it seems everything still fits and there's still plenty of copper grease left for those bolts. And I still need to work on tuning my torque wrench because Sretton from M539 Restorations does a much better job of this than me. However, the result is the same and we have the diff finally bolted back into the subframe. And our emulsifying friend makes a return for this episode as we prepare to reinstall the integral link bushings into the rear knuckles. Even though it's metal on metal this time for the bushings, the P80 still works like a treat and like before dries completely allowing for a proper installation of the bush. This bushing specific tool fits snugly around the rubber part of the bush and so a bit more of our P80 just makes sure it doesn't tear during installation. And you'll have to forgive me for leaving this clip in real time. I just wanted to show how easy this bush is to fit, which basically made me feel better for spending money on the P80 and on the tool itself. And this looks slightly better than the old bush that we removed back in episode 6. And the supplied seat clip just slips right into place. Yo! And with a bit of fast forwarding magic, the other side gets sorted as well. And it may seem like we can't see the wood for the bushings, but we're getting close to the end now, and just the lower wishbone bushings to fit. Keeping your iPhone handy makes life a bit easier. Here I'm checking the orientation of the original bush to replicate the position of the new one. And like in the previous episode, we have to use a clamp, which makes fitting the split bush a bit easier.
I'm using a 54 millimeter OD cup to push the bushing in and a 60 millimeter OD cup as a receiver for the other side. And I never did figure out if my missus was just coming by to check that up on me or to see if her car would ever make it back onto the road again. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you had editing for real life and you could just skip through all the boring bits too? <laughs> but it's also nice when everything goes to plan and the other wishbone bushing goes in as planned. With the two larger M14 bushes done, it's now time to move on to the M12. But actually for the E39, these are supposed to be M10, but more on this in a few moments. These smaller diameter bushings have a larger split, so I used a slightly stronger clump to get these down to size. And here's a small sample of some of the extra bearing packs that I bought. And they're a really simple construction, but highly effective in helping to spread the tension on the thread as the bushings are pressed in. Nothing really new to see here, just the same process, but on the smaller diameter bushings. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the issue E39 drivers have in getting OEM bushings for the lower control arm. As of 2022, it's possible to get OEM bushing sets for the E60, 63, 65 and 53, but the E39 is currently missing. Here are the two Lymferter part numbers listed for this control arm. 3493301 and 3493401. And although it appears that these part numbers are not compatible for the E39, I realized it's still possible to use the E53 lower control arm bushings, which you can see the specs of listed here. M14 for the larger diameter bush and M12 for the smaller diameter bush. I discovered through reading a lot of online forums that most E39 owners come across this problem at one time or another. But there is an alternative to using the OEM Lymferder bush, and there is a company called Febest, which produces two bushings 
that are compatible with the E39. You can see them listed here. I was reluctant to move away from them further because I'd used them on every other single bush on the car. For reference, there is a guy called Kinked Chrome on m5board.com and he modifies the existing Limferder bushes to fit the E39. He even offers a monoball setup for those of you who want to go tracking, but I wasn't willing to spend that kind of money. But I also wasn't willing to risk using Febest and I wanted to stick with Limferder. So that left me looking at my desktop again for a little bit longer. However, shortly thereafter, I found a company online that machines aluminium sleeves and in exactly the dimensions that I needed. Something to go from M12 to M10 and that was 70 millimeters long. And with luck, they have 12 by 10 by 35, which just means I needed to use two instead of one sleeve. And my luck continued. As you can see, the tolerances on the bushing matched really well to the tolerances on the sleeve. So making sure that the inner diameter of the bushing was nice and clean. All I used was a little bit of Loctite to secure these sleeves in place. And the nice thing is the clamping force still acts on the main bushing itself and the sleeve centers the bolt and prevents any rattling. Well, that was the theory at least, but I was willing to give it a go. So I used a couple of aluminium plates along with my rubber clamp just to make sure the Loctite set the sleeves perfectly flush with the edge of the bush. However, what you don't see here is the many sleepless nights that I had trying to figure this out. Looking for somebody who would lend me a set of vernier calibers. Looking for somebody else who would lend me a lathe. Asking nicely at the scrapyard if they had any aluminium. Telling my wife she might have to give up the car and get on her bike. And in the end, I was rescued by an online company that makes these sleeves in their thousands. And with very little euro, I was able to make these E53 bushings compatible for the E39 and ready to be installed back into the subframe. I think in the end these four sleeves cost less than 10 euro. <laughs> and with the wishbones rebushed, unfortunately it means that this episode has to come to an end, but it also means in the next episode we actually finish the rebuild of the subframe, and I think I finally stopped using the word bush. <laughs> so thanks for watching and see you next time.